to Couch Potato Diary. Happy Thursday. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for tuning in today. It's NFL Power Rankings Day. Now, full disclosure, I did tape this show on Wednesday. I uh, just have a couple other things going on on Thursday. So um, if I'm not discussing some wild, crazy thing that happened, uh, that, that, that would be why. Um, if you are listening to this on Thursday, then it's a Calgary Flames game day as the Flames are taking on the Dallas Stars this evening. Excuse me. I will be on... Game Over Calgary tonight when that game is done. Uh, I'm on Game Over tonight and Game Over on Saturday night. So um, tune in for those. That should be a whole lot of fun there. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, right. You can find me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm at PrimetimeKlein, twitch.tv slash PrimetimePK. And you can email this show, this one right here, Couch Potato Diary at yahoo.com. You can also find Couch Potato Diary on Facebook. Uh, so, like I said, coming up on the show today, it is all about NFL power rankings. Rate, uh, reminder, rate, review, subscribe wherever you can, and uh, hit subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, let's get into some NFL power rankings. All right, um... Let's kick this thing off with the worst team in the NFL, and that would be the Carolina Panthers. I don't know what would have to happen for Carolina to not be the worst team in the NFL um, in one of these, uh, but uh, it hasn't happened yet. They are just dreadful. Um, Bryce Young, this is a really difficult year out in Carolina, right? Like, there's no question about that, that this has been a really, really tough time for the Carolina Panthers. Bryce Young, I have concerns about how he has looked. And look, that there is no there is no help around him, right? The offensive line is trash. Um, Adam Thielen is the best weapon he has to throw to, which Adam Thielen's been great. That's a pro- He should be your number three. Um, that This team has severely let down Bryce Young in his first year as a professional. That This is looking a lot like what the Jets did with uh, Zach Wilson, what the Jets did with Sam Darnold. Uh, this is looking like those sorts of things. Like, that, this is not a franchise that has helped this quarterback out. And like I said, I don't think he's entirely blameless. Although he's a rookie, so he should be. But I feel like this is someone who, like, he doesn't really start lo- um, working his way through his reads until he gets to the top of the drop. Like, it's drop, drop, drop. Okay. <sighs> now what do we got? And at that point, he's getting hit. Like... The NFL moves quicker, and I just don't know if he's picked up on that quickness just yet. There's obviously some talent there, right? Like, he's not... This isn't Ryan Leaf. This isn't Jamarcus Russell. That This is someone who is clearly a talented quarterback, but is very clearly not someone who can just carry this type of a roster and is someone who very clearly is not getting the help that he should be getting, and Carolina has failed him there. Uh, number 31, it's the New England Patriots. They have a real look at um, the the second overall pick right now, which would be either Caleb Williams or Drake May, which would be a really interesting twist for the Patriots to, to kind of get their quarterback. I, I think it's it's so clear that Mac Jones is not their guy, right? Like they are they are so very out on Mac Jones. So what's like there? I think they have to go with a different quarterback route next year. And they're going to be in a position where they are going to be able to do that. Um, if they stay in the, the number two spot, maybe even in the number three, we will see how that goes. But th- this is, again, it's a flawed roster. This defense is all right. The, the defense is actually fine. They've been banged up a little bit this year, but th- this is still a, a talented defense. There's nothing on offense, man. There's Ramondre Stevenson and nothing else. And uh, the play calling has been bad. The coaching has been terrible. This should be Bill Belichick's last year with the New England Patriots. At 30, I have Chicago. Yes, they get the win on Monday Night Football, but holy crap, was that game ugly. And it's one of those ones where you just kind of look and say, look, Justin Fields ain't it. We, they've tried. They put some talent around him this year. They've made some big moves to, to go um, surround him with talent. It's not it. If they get the the number three overall pick, they might be in a tricky spot because I don't think, um, like, I guess, like, well, I guess they would have the number one right now because they have Carolina's pick. So they're they're in a good spot to take a quarterback, I should say. But if they did fall to a number three spot for whatever reason, then they're in a tough spot uh, unless the team ahead of them is going to be looking at a um, wide receiver instead. But... I, I just like, I, I think there's something there with Justin Fields. It's just not working in Chicago. I do think um, there is quite a bit of that, that uh, quite a bit of this that is coaching. They did, we, we talked about this earlier in the year when, when he talked about um, 
how he wasn't comfortable in this offense. They were just like, Kate, you're a pocket passer now. Like there was no easing into it. There was no transition. And that is something that teams have had real issue with. It's okay. We're going to let you be a runner for a little bit. We're going to let you do your thing. We're going to let you all this stuff. And now pocket passer. There, there's no easing into it. There's no, okay, well now roll over here and then you only have a couple of reads that you have to go through, do that. And now, okay, now let's expand it a little bit and expand it a little there, There's no growth in it. It just seems like runner, 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 passer. There's no easing into it. And there was none here with, with Justin Fields. And I, I think that they have done him a real disservice. And so when we went over the, the quarterback situations in the league um, the other week, Justin Fields fits, I think, on a number of these teams. The problem is, a lot of these teams' quarterback isn't the only issue. But if he ends up on, like, an Atlanta or something like that, then that team, I think, really takes off. And it is a, a tremendous second act in his career. Uh, at 29, it's Arizona. The Kyler stuff has been fun, um, but they're bad. And they, they need to build around this. Right now, they're in a spot for, like, a top three pick. If they could get Michael Harrison Jr. or Marvin Harrison Jr., sorry, then... All of a sudden, this team explodes. Uh, well, explodes might be a bit much, but you, you now have like a, a pretty good foundation on the offense to, to maybe build this thing around. You got to work on the defensive side, and it's going to be tough with Kyler's contract situation, but I, I think there is at least something there out in Arizona. At 28, it's the Giants. They're winning with Tommy DeVito, so that's something, but like this offense is so bad, and the defense is all right. We'll see what happens next year with, with no Daniel Jones, probably, for the Giants, what, what they do. Like, they're not a team that's ready to go get number one quarterback. They need to build that foundation, I think, first with the Giants, because it's just, it's not there. Um, at 27, it's the Jets. Apparently, Aaron Rodgers is uh, going to come back. I think that is the height of stupidity, and it is just feeding into the ego and the arrogance of this asshole, but that's what they're doing, so good on them. Um, we'll see if his leg explodes in two plays. Uh, at 26, it's Washington. That was a rough one on the national stage, uh, getting absolutely shit-kicked by, by Dallas, but, like, this defense isn't very good. I still stand by that this offense has a little bit there that they can work with. Um, they, they weren't finishing drives off very well, but they were moving the ball against Dallas a little bit, so there's there's something there with this offense to, to build on. At 25, it's the Vegas Raiders. Uh, apparently, Swagger isn't the only thing this team needed, as talent would certainly help. Um, they got rocked pretty good by Kansas City here this last week, but there's at least... Maybe there's a little bit more, uh, especially on the defensive side. There's maybe a little bit more to this team than I was giving them credit for at the beginning of the season. Uh, at 24, you have the Minnesota Vikings. They're fine. Uh, that was a real ugly loss on Monday Night Football. Um, and a a loss that I, I don't think you can like really bounce back from. Like That feels like a, oh, it's over now. With um with Dobbs like and it was the same thing in Arizona right it was a cool story he came in he did all of this stuff um but now it's the turning to a pumpkin or whatever right like the more teams are ready for it the more teams have film on it the more teams can prepare and just absolutely shut this team down at 23 it is Atlanta they continue to be incredibly frustrating uh 22 it's Green Bay they're moving on up after a good win against Detroit and maybe they're turning into the team that we had talked about them being at the beginning of the season when I was saying look they have weapons on this team that there's like some of these kids are going to grow into their roles here. And Jordan Love, I think, is starting to grow into his role a little bit. I love, in an NFL that is so dink and dunk right now, I love how aggressive they were pushing the ball up the field, exposing the frauds that were the Detroit Lions on the defensive side of the football. At 21, it's Indianapolis. They just keep winning games. I keep not taking them seriously, and they keep coming out here week after week. I probably could send a kid to college on the amount that I've bet against this team. That's inaccurate entirely. I don't bet that much, but it's just every week. They're one of the ones. Oh, I lost that one. Okay. Moving on. Like I, I learned no lessons going up against the Indianapolis, Indianapolis Colts. This is a fine football team. They're fine at 20. It's Tennessee. I should probably have these flip flopped. Um, the, the season's kind of done out in Tennessee. They're on to next year, but they got to win this week. So there's that, uh, at 19 it's Tampa Bay. That was a really bad loss against the Indianapolis Colts. I know I just like a second ago talked about how much I, I kind of dig the Colts now. That's a team that 
that oh that win would have been so good for us for our Tampa Bay call this year um to go over the win total and have a shot at the division they win that game they're tied for first in the NFC at five and six and have a real shot of making it to the postseason losing that game is just a gut punch at 18 it's Seattle they are I think so clearly flawed now um that defense kind of got shredded by San Francisco now Many a good defense has been shredded by San Francisco, but this offense can't do anything. Um, they, they just, they, they can't, Gino has lost whatever he had a year ago. Um, Charbonnet is not the running back I thought he was going to be, the guy who was ready to take over for, for Kenneth Walker. He has kind of just been a guy this year. Um, he's fine, but it's, it's been a bit of a, oh. Out in out in Seattle. Uh, at 17, it's Denver. I still don't think they're that good. Um, I put that clip out there the other day. I just don't think this is a, a good football team, but they keep winning games and they keep hanging around in the AFC. At 16, it's New Orleans. This defense is for real, and this offense just has nothing. And now Olave is uh, potentially going to be missing some time. Um, who knows what, what's going to happen with that, but this is... It's perplexing to me. I think it's a coaching thing. Um, but the, again, Dennis Allen is coaching up a hell of a defense. So I think they need a better offensive mind in there to, to help move this thing along because there's pieces there. I don't understand why this offense can't get out of its own way. At 15, it's the Chargers. That is definitely way too high. Um, I should probably move them down. I'm looking at my own rankings being like, ah, oh, you fucked up that one. It's just, it's not happening this year. It just isn't. The the weapons around Justin Herbert are kind of faltering. Justin Herbert, I think, is kind of faltering himself. And the coaching is atrocious. Um, the decision-making on this team, week in and week out, is costing this team football games and costing Justin Herbert years of his prime. So that's all that's happening with the Chargers right now. Um, at 14, it's the Rams. This is probably a little bit too high for them as well, but I just, I think there's real potential on the offensive side of the ball for this team in the, the last few weeks of the season. At 13 at Cincinnati, that's going to continue to fall. There's a lot of talent on this team, but without Joe Burrow at quarterback, it all, like just every wart gets shown on this team. The problems with the offensive line, um, and then, I mean, that's mainly the main one, the problems with the offensive line, because there's a lot of weapons for them to, to work the ball to, but it's just not, it's just not going to work this year, I don't think, for Cincinnati. At 12, it's Cleveland. Man, if they could have got the quarterback spot figured out, th this team actually has something here. But Deshaun Watson um, was never it this season, and now whatever backup they have, maybe Joe Flacco comes in and lead this team in the playoffs. But this is, it's not the record-setting defense that everyone was talking about, but this is a high-level defense that the Cleveland Browns have. Um, at 11, it's Pittsburgh. We talked about them the other week. How bad was the offense in Pittsburgh that they put up 16 this week? And everyone's like, oh my god, Pittsburgh's back. New dynamic offense. Here comes the Steelers. Um, there's talent again. I still don't think, like, was Kenny Pickett the biggest problem in Pittsburgh? No. Now he might be. Um, I, I just, I still think this quarterback's limited and I, I don't think he's going to be able to take this team where they want to get to at 10. It's the Houston Texans. That was a tough loss, but I think a loss that they can kind of build from. And this is certainly a season of a lot of optimism out in Houston. And, uh, they have now set a foundation, um, going forward for this team at nine. It's Detroit. I've said before. For the rest of the year, I'm not doing the, yeah, well, who have they beat? But you could so clearly see the flaws they have on uh, on the defensive side last week on Thursday night, or Thursday morning, sorry, when Green Bay just torched them. And you could also see Jared Goff, it's starting to crack a little bit. Uh, the turnovers are starting to become a real problem, and this offense has kind of stalled. They need... The, the one thing that I do like from this offense is it does seem like Jamison Williams has started to grow week in and week out. He has started to, to put something together in Detroit. I think he's going to continue to grow, and I think he's going to be a real interesting piece for this team next season. At eight, it's Jacksonville. That was a, um, this is probably a bit of an antiquated term. That was a big boy win for Jacksonville on, on Sunday, and now they control their destiny in that division and have a shot at top spot in this conference. At seven, it's Buffalo. There were finally signs of life from Buffalo this week. It's a loss, yes, but they outplayed Philadelphia, and I didn't know if that was possible with this group anymore. They put that outing um, out there week in and week out. They're going to beat a lot of teams. So Buffalo is still hanging around in the top 10 here. At six, it is the Baltimore Ravens. Um, we, we've, we've talked about them for a bit, but they're they're just starting to put this all together, right? Like, that's that's what's happening, is this offense is starting to gel out in Baltimore. At five, it is Miami. Um, 
yeah, don't have a lot to, to say about Miami uh, this week. They're they're very 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 good. The, like this, the, this offense is stupid good, and I think the defense is improving week in and week out. At four, it's Dallas. That was a hell of a performance on uh, on Thanksgiving, and again, the who have they beat? We we took that theory down yesterday. No one's beat anyone this year in the NFL because barely any teams are anyone this year in the NFL. They've had a couple cracks at it. They outplayed Philadelphia in that game that they lost. They're going to have another chance at it um, here in a little bit. But defensively, this team is on fire. Offensively, they are moving the ball really, really, really well. But now it's going to be a matter of when it gets down to those games that matter, can they actually do it? Kansas City is at three. Um, that second half against the Raiders was stunning, what they were able to, to put together. And now, can this offense finally put a couple of good weeks in a row? We will see. At two, it is uh, San Francisco. I think they're playing better football than anyone right now in, in the league. Um, I just, I I love what this offense is. Uh, defensively, they are the game changers all over the board. I think this is the most complete team in the NFL. But the stretch that Philadelphia has been on, and to come out of it with uh, four wins and a 10-1 and record, you, you just have to celebrate that as the number one team in football right now. So Philadelphia Eagles are my number one team. It's funny, I was looking at it like what... Um, cause we're getting into college football playoff time. One versus four, two versus three college football. My NFL playoff ranking, um, would have Philadelphia against Dallas on one side and San Francisco, Kansas city on the other. Fuck the playoffs, man. Let's just, let's do that. Let's let, let's do those games. Um, probably not. That's probably not going to happen. But anyway, those are your NFL power rankings for the week. Uh, let's do a quick today's ticket. Now, this can be a little bit dangerous because I am taping this on a Wednesday, but these are the ones that I've clicked on on this Wednesday for Thursday. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys minus nine against Seattle. Like I've said, Seattle's defense is starting to show some real holes. Offensively, um, they're, they're showing some real holes, some real problems. And Dallas is a team that will blow out lesser competition. I think they do that here this week against Seattle. So uh, I'm going Cowboys minus nine. Vegas. Let me down against Edmonton. Let me down against um, uh, against Calgary. They're not going to do it three times in a row, right? We're going to go Vegas plus 104 against Vancouver. And uh, the Florida Panthers minus a goal and a half against Montreal. The Habs will be playing a back-to-back. -back. Um, the Panthers are just a significantly better team. So I'm going to go Panthers minus one and a half there. All right, that's going to do it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, again, if you're listening in podcast form, leave a review, subscribe to the channel. If you are watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like a video, leave a comment. Um, that, that stuff helps me out greatly. Um, you can find me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm at PrimetimeKlein, twitch.tv slash PrimetimePK. And you can email this show, CouchPotatoDiary, at yahoo.com. Uh, coming up on the show tomorrow, it is going to be Fights in Football Friday. There's a sneaky good fight night card, so we're going to look at that. We're going to do our WrestleMania picks now. Um, as, like I said, we're getting into Royal Rumble season, which is WrestleMania season, so look out for that. Um, and then we are going to have an NFL preview for you as well. So that is all coming up. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will talk to all of you later. Have a good day, everybody.